So this video is based on polynomials of a higher degree than, quadra than quadratic, so cubics and quartics, and how to uh, sketch them. So let's start with a cubic, and a cubic is of the form y is equal to ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d, where the x to the power of 3 makes it the uh, cubic, it's the, that makes it the cubic form. Now in order to sketch uh, cubics, like quadratics, you need to get it into its factorised form. So this is going to be something like y is equal to x plus e, x plus f, x plus g, for example. So in this set of videos, and for this chapter in general, all of the equations are going to be put straight into the factorised form for you because in order to factor a uh, cubic and get it into this form you need to know skills with, uh, from chapter 7 in order to factorise a cubic without using a calculator as chronologically you wouldn't have done this yet you're not actually really going to encounter this form of the equation at all you're only going to encounter the factorised form so to sketch cubics, sketching cubics is very similar to sketching quadratics. The approach is the exact same. The only difference is what the shape of the graph looks like. The shape of the graph is slightly different. So let's use an example to help us. So let's sketch the graph, the cubic. y is equal to x plus 1, 2x minus 1, and x minus 3. And let's go through and uh, sketch this and, and know how to do it. So in order to sketch a cubic, you need to know three things about the graph. The first thing is whether it is a positive or a negative graph. Now, this is the same for a quadratic member. For a quadratic, you need to know whether it's a positive or negative parabola, although you can't call a cubic a parabola. I only actually found this out make it, while making this video, is that you have to call a cubic, uh, you can't call it a parabola. But you need to know whether it's a positive or negative graph. Now, like a quadratic, whether it's a positive or negative graph is dependent on the coefficient of x to the power of 3. If the coefficient of x to the power of 3 is positive, it's going to be a positive uh, cubic. Uh, positive graph and if the coefficient of x to the power of 3 is negative it's going to be a negative um, graph. So a positive um, graph, a positive cubic is going to look like this and a negative cubic is going to look like this here. Now the main differences between uh, a cubic and a, qu uh, a quadratic, the first thing is that a cubic has two turning points where a quadratic only has one. And the second difference is that these kind of two tails uh, here, they end up on opposite sides of the x-axis for both, where for a quadratic they end up on the same side of the x-axis. The reason this is, is briefly, you don't need to notice, but just to maybe help with an explanation uh, to stick it in your mind, is that remember when you cube a negative number, it's a negative number, so you're going to get a negative um, output for y. But when you cube, um, but when you square a negative number, sorry, for a quadratic, it is a p also a positive number, so the tails are going to be on the same side um, of the x-axis, but you don't need to know that, but that's just um, to help um, explain why it looks like that. So in order to find whether it's a positive or a negative um, qu uh, cubic, it's going to depend on whether the coefficient of x to the power of 3 is positive or negative. And in order to find the coefficient of x to the power of 3 in the factored form, you have to times all the coefficients of x together, because if you do it long-handed and expand the brackets, this is what is going to give you the uh, coefficient of x to the power of 3. So if you times all of these values, all these coefficients together, so it's going to be 1 times 2 times 1, it's going to give you 2, which is a positive value, so therefore you're going to get a positive graph in this instance. Um, now, really quick, just as a side note, this isn't really to do with positive or negative graphs, but I just saw this in the um, in the uh, book, is they could give you the cubic in the form y is equal to minus x plus 1, x plus 2, x plus 3. Now remember, what this symbolises, this minus, is actually a minus 1, and that means you have to times um, by minus 1, and it means you need to times 1 of the bracket by minus 1. It doesn't matter which one, so let's just do the first one. So this is going to become minus x minus 1, x plus 2, 
x plus 3. You only have to times one of them uh, by minus 1. It doesn't matter which one. And therefore, from this, if you wanted to, you could find a way out of it as a positive or negative graph by times in minus 1 times 1 times 1, which is negative. So therefore, in this example, it would be a negative graph. The second thing that you'll need to find is the roots. Now, the roots um, for a cubic, there will either be 3, 2, or one root, and I'll go over um, a bit more in detail uh, in a bit of why that is. So you could use a calculator when it's in the long form, but when it's in the bracket, it's um, it's very easy to find the roots. Remember, you just equal um, uh, y to zero, and then you can easily find the roots by doing it um, with the brackets um, by um, one of these going to be equal to zero. And obviously it's very easy to do that in your head. Just one more time I'll do this um, long hand just for an explanation. So one of these is going to be equal to zero. So x plus one is going to be equal to zero possibly. So that means x is equal to minus one. That's one of the roots. Two x minus one is equal to zero. So two x is equal to one. So x is equal to half as the other root. And x minus three is equal to zero. So x is um, equal to three as the other roots. And there are your three roots. Um, it's very easy to find um, for um, the cubic. The third thing that you need to know is the y-intercepts. And again, this is very easy. You approach it in the um, similar way um, in which you do for um, the uh, quadratic. Um, so if it's in the normal form, This here is going to be the y-intercept. Um, now, if it's in the um, the factored form, so as we've got it, y is equal to x plus 1, 2x minus 1, x minus 3. The way you do it, as I explained in a previous video with the quadratic, is you just times all of these numbers together, and that will give you what the eventual value of d would be if you expand um, the whole thing. So if you times all these numbers together, you're going to get that the y-intercept is equal to 3. Um, just a quick note on turning points. Um, so usually, um, as I showed in the previous um, slide, there are usually two turning points um, for a cubic. Um, now, for this chapter, you won't be asked to find any of the turning points because none of the methods from before work. Um, your calculator won't tell you the turning points. Completing the square, um, you can only use for quadratics. And for the midpoint of the roots, what you'll actually find is that a cubic isn't symmetrical um, around its roots. So if you did something like this, and this is the turning point here, and these are the roots. You won't; it won't uh, be the case where the midpoint here is the um, the x coordinate of the turning point. That's not how it works in cubics. It doesn't how it works. So don't make the same mistake as this. It, this symmetry doesn't work like that. Um, so you can't find the turning point in this chapter. In chapter twelve, you will learn how to find turning points of cubics. Uh, but don't worry about it um, for now. Okay, so now we have all the information up here um, to sketch the graph. So it's going to be a positive um, graph, a positive cubic. The roots are going to be minus one and a half and three. So I'm going to kind of kind of aim my roots here, kind of as a template. Here's the half, and I'll put the three about here. And the wind set will be about three. The scale doesn't matter too much. I'll just put it about here. Remember. Um, so if I sketch it, it's going to look probably something like. this and that's a perfectly um, reasonable um, uh, cubic to draw um, maybe do it a tiny bit straighter over here but obviously I'm on drawing tablets so it's a tiny bit difficult um, and then remember the most important thing you have to do is label it that's the most important thing to do really so this here is going to be minus one this here is going to be a half and this here is going to be three and then the y-intercept up here is going to be three as well